a dimension has a tolerance, what it directly gives us is a plus minus or the limit dimensioning system. For example, if you see in the screen, there are multiple dimensions shown, shown in the screen, but I have highlighted few dimensions. The nominal size or the mid, mid size of the given dimension might be 35, but still it has a tolerance plus 0.25 minus 0.25. So this is what the idea of Mr. Ali with me. Each dimension to have a tolerance so that it is achievable and ends up in interchangeability. So this was the system he was advocating and he was promoting and by which he was able to build first interchangeable machine gun assemblies. I have shown different examples here. This is one of the examples of limit dimensioning. This is one of the example of limit dimensioning. These are all examples of limit dimensioning or plus or minus dimensioning, the way you call it. There are different names to this. Uh, they say plus or minus dimensioning, limit dimensioning, and coordinate dimensioning. When I say coordinate dimensioning, what I mean is you are not going to dimension the different futures in the part. Instead, you are going to dimension the coordinates of different futures. For example, there is a drill here. The counterbore drill is available here. We are going to dimension the center point of the drill from this coordinate. You can see clearly it is 20 plus or minus 0.25. So this is what is called coordinate dimensioning. This being the starting point, Stanley Parker, a quality inspector from Royal Torpedo Factory in Scotland, found that there is some limitation of coordinate dimensioning. One of the main limitation, if you see, when we start to use coordinate dimensioning, what we end up is a square tolerance zone. I'll explain you clearly. Take for example, the future shown here, the counterbore hole. Let us try to understand what is the tolerance available for the axis of the hole. So the dimension available in the vertical axis is 10 plus or minus 0.25. And the dimension along with the tolerance available in the horizontal axis is 10 again the tolerance of plus or minus 0.25. If you plot this all this tolerance in a graph sheet what you will get is this being the axis of the counterboard hole that we are interested upon and 10 being the nominal size on both directions. We will have 9.75 and 10.25 as the lower limit and upper limit available for the axis location. When you plot all this dimension together, what you get is a square tolerance zone. And this is the observation of Mr. Stanley Parker. And he stated this is a limitation of coordinate dimensioning. And he was one of the first people to initiate use of geometric tolerancing. When I say geometric tolerancing, Mr. Parker, instead of dimensioning and tolerancing the coordinates, he started dimensioning and tolerancing the geometry of the part. In our case, it would be the cylindrical hole here. Instead of dimensioning the axis of the hole, what he started to dimension is the hole geometry. This is where the GDNT started. The geometric dimensioning started. The geometric dimensioning and tolerancing started. From there on, people understood there are different geometries in every part and if, if we control the geometries in every part, we will be able to achieve the final intent effectively and in the best possible manner. As we see, there are so many geometries available in any part. We have, we have been discussing about a cylindrical hole until now, but if you see the same part again, when I say geometry, the cylindrical geometry, the flat geometry, all those geometries are available in any part. If you want to manufacture any part, you have to come across different geometries of the part. And to achieve the design intent of all these geometry, there were numerous methods across the world. And there came a time when the engineering world started to standardize all those geometric dimension tokens and methods. Even now, there are many standards available across the world, across the different industries. But two primary standards that are used across the world are ASME and ISO. 
the ASME stands for American Society of Mechanical Engineers and ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization. ASME started with military standard as I said earlier it all started with World War II and it all started for military purposes and that's where the standard initiated and it has evolved through the time starting from military standard 8 of 1950s through to ANSI standards American National System standards and now American Society of Mechanical Engineers 